Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, number 14. Oh, I, uh, I wish I had something significant to say about the number 14, but uh, I got nothing. This episode is Edward Stinson. Edward, you're going to love. Not only because he's hilarious and awesome, but his voice is amazing. Like, I, I just want to give him stuff to read and then record it. And then save it forever, because he has such a soothing voice, which I'm sure you'll find out. But um, in this episode, we <laughs> the the first the first chunk, we we just geek out over Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones and medieval stuff and like hardcore. If you don't know what it's like to hang out with me, and talk about stuff that I enjoy, fandoms of anything, this is a pretty good gauge. You can listen to this and be like, okay, that's exactly what it's like to hang out with Brian. Uh, we also talk about him working at the Renaissance Fair, um, his first uh, sword fight that he did in the shows, favorite weapons he's used. Um, we touch on Game of Thrones quite a bit. But the one of the coolest things about Edward is, is he he created a, a, a basically a board game. It's called Cathedral, and it is an RPG chess game. What? That is awesome. Uh, I met I met Edward back at Geek Fest um, this e- earlier this year, and he had a booth next to mine, and it's it's just the coolest thing ever. It's like imagine if you're playing chess and then you take the pieces, give them backstories and characteristics and traits, and you can level them up over stuff, and then to find out that it was originally his dad's idea when he was in high school, and it's become like this family ordeal. It's so so cool. Uh, but anyway, I've already talked way past my limit. Here is the interesting podcast of Jedi Brian number 14 with the awesome Edward Stinson. Enjoy. Connects directly to the mics, and then okay. the mics just like that. And then eat. I'm super down. I love it. I, when I first wanted to do a podcast, I was like, all right, I need to make it as mobile as possible. Oh, dude, absolutely. You can do it anywhere with this thing. Because like, usually what they try to do is they have the Zoom yeah, plugged yeah. into a mixer board, plugged into a laptop. Mm, okay, and I was okay. like, I don't own a laptop. Yeah, you can't take that. I don't need a mixer board. <laughs> and there's no outlets here, so shenanigans happen. Exactly. Thank you. It's over. <laughs> my God, my God, sir. I've you. All right, first off, I've wanted you on the podcast for a very long time. Dude, I'm. So, you, I've been wanting to be one, here. One. Oh my God. You always look so cool. Oh my God. It's like medieval <laughs> stuff. Two, oh my God. <laughs> two, you yes, made sir. your own board game. Oh, my God. And Thank three, you. Thank you. your voice is so cool. Oh my <laughs> good sir, please. Right? Oh, oh, please. I have my moments. My <laughs> I have my moments. <laughs> Always moments. Whatever comes out of your mouth just sounds so cool. Oh, God. You've got, I mean, I'm going to fan over you for a while. Oh, dude, I'm a fan of you. Dude. <laughs> You've got, no. My cabbage is, like, oh, you know, your, your standards perfect. are way too low. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sorry. Anyone who can accurately... It's the NPCs that matter, okay? It's, it's the background <laughs> people. I'm, those are the important ones. Like, dude, the Cabbages Man, he's easily one of the main characters of, of Avatar. I've got him. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, dude. You know. I've got Cabbages. Sir, sir you know. You know. <laughs> oh, my God. You do a show. Uh, yes, sir, I do. I do. I've seen a couple episodes. Oh, um, Mainly yes. just to listen to you. Um, look, oh, yes, dude. It's, do you do, you do audiobooks? Um, I want to. <laughs> It'd you be the coolest to. thing. Uh, eventually, I want to you know, get into recording uh, and be able to really do an audiobook. I think that'd be yeah. like the coolest thing to do. Uh, of cannot lie, I eventually do want to read the story to Cathedral. You know, my, oh, my book... Um, I was just about to say, make a story in that. Yeah, that. dude, exactly. Um, I'm releasing a story edition of it uh, within the next five months. Oh I'm going to get the whole God. story together. Every page is going to have a picture on it. Um, oh. It's going to be 100 something long, so technically will be my first book. Yeah. You know, that one's a rule book, so this one will be a story book, you know, oh. with writing, oh. a story, characters, all that good stuff. And um, I eventually want to make it a, a audio book. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, hey, if you like listening to my voice, then you, <laughs> can, you, know, you can hear it. And I was also excited before you even said that. Oh now I'm double excited. <laughs> I'm happy to help, my good sir. That's happy to so help. That's so awesome. <laughs> 
Absolutely, man. So, okay. you know, that's going to be going on soon. Do you prefer Ed, Edward, Eddie? What iteration um, do you prefer? My name prefer? is Edward James okay. Stinson the Third. And so um, my nickname is actually Trey. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I've been known as Trey for, for like... For the third. Yes, sir. Ha -ha. For the longest time. I'm um, with you. And literally, it just depends on who knows me and from where. Like, if you know me from, like, the Renaissance Fair, right. I'm either Eduardo or, sorry, Don Eduardo. <laughs> or Don Edward. Eduardo. <laughs> one or the other. Um, if you know me from, like, any form of school, then I'm probably Trey. Trey, so, okay. you know, Oh, in college, I was definitely Edward as well because I was like, okay, my freshman year, I was like, I don't want to mess anyone up. I don't need to get screwed over. I'm, I'm, I'm Edward. Right. I'm Edward. I'm professional here, guys. I'm right. professional. So I'm Edward in, I'm Edward in college. Okay. Trey, like, high school and below. And if you know me from anywhere else, it's just randomness about what you're going to know me by. What do you prefer? <laughs> what do you want me to call you? Because we're Facebook friends, so I, like I always Edward. see Edward. You can call me Edward. Because like okay. you, you know me as Edward, I'm not going to change, so you have your mindset here. But do you like Edward? Oh, or do you yeah. prefer yeah, yeah. Eduardo? It's, it's my name, <laughs> Eduardo. You know, that, that's, that's my renaissance persona. Gotcha, so, okay. In, in awesome normalness, gotcha. I'm just Edward. Just Edward. Yeah, and, yeah. Edward's in my, in my regularness, right, yeah. Trey. Yeah, so I have, I have okay. differences, but it's So okay. depending on how I feel, I have a list that I can call list. you. You have a list. <laughs> yeah, got options. I like options. No, I'm a man of my people, sir. Right? Make it easier for you. Make it easier for you. The people's champion, Eduardo. Exactly. My the good third. sir. My good sir. <laughs> Absolutely. That's amazing. <laughs> Well, so you, you like man. medieval stuff? Um, absolutely. I love medieval stuff. Oh, Do you like Lord sir. of the Rings? Sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> Please. Okay. Please. Literally, like, <laughs> just last week, I was looking through my garage for, you know, the book fair stuff. Sure. And I came across a Lord of the Rings book called, like, Arms and Armor. And yeah. it goes over the story and backgrounds of literally every major character oh. from the movies. And then it goes into the written story of who Sauron was in the first two ages, the yeah, first yeah. two thousand years before this story even begins. Oh. So they talk about the Dark Lord Sauron, the Dark Lord Saruman, how they're involved, who uh, Gandalf is, how he's actually the same race as the Balrog yeah, and Sauron. That he's actually, like one of the yeah, higher beings. One, yeah, like they're just a higher being. Oh, like no so one cool. in Middle Earth could have killed the Balrog except Gandalf. Yeah. Like that's that's oh. just how it is. Oh, you know? God, I love Lord of the like, Rings. Literally, the Balrog killed all of Moria. Yeah, and right. then the goblins were like, well, we'll help out. Right. He's <laughs> like, all right, cool. So you know, I'm like, this this is awesome. Like, this it, easily one of the cooler stories. No, one is one of the coolest oh, for stories. Sure. You for know? Sure. Um, just the depth that they went into with their fantasy. You know, and it's been oh, a yes. huge influence on how I do Cathedral. You know, um, how I handle the, the lore of Cathedral, the characters of Cathedral, uh, and how the lore builds who the characters that you play the game with are. Sure. You know, so. I, oh. The only thing I love more than Lord of the Rings is Star Wars. And oh. I like Star Wars a lot. So that's saying. Oh, dude, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I feel like that's how Lord you of the know Rings. the difference between people. You yes, know, like, absolutely. Oh. Dude, Lord of the Rings, I that was, as a kid, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to be Aragorn. Right? My brother's <laughs> Legolas. <laughs> oh, my God, yes, absolutely. Who's your right. favorite character? Um, is it Aragorn? I, it should evil. be Aragorn. I'm not evil. No, I'm don't say Sauron. No. Oh, the, thank God. It's between Gandalf okay. and the Nazgul leader. Yeah, the Witch the, King? Yeah, the Witch King. Thank you, that's yeah? shame. The Witch King. Dude, he looks freaking bald. He's terrifying. Dude, his helmet. And first of all, when, when, like, when they killed his Nazgul, I'm just like, okay, he's going to come down. He's going to have the normal, like, sword, maybe a shield. Who comes down <laughs> no, no. has he's a mace, mace the size that's, like, of you. Like, the size of a person. You, <laughs> tied to a chain. A spiked you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, I'm, I'm going to destroy you. Shattered this. a shield, one hit. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Uh, like, that's a uh, one shot. Okay. This, yeah, this, right? dude, this dude is easily, like, a boss level character. She's, like, maybe level 40. Dude's easily level, like, 80. Oh, okay? at least. At and least. has, like, the epic mount. So and I'm you like, can't kill him. You can't even kill Unless him. It's like, no man can kill me. Yeah. I am no Wait, man. Only loophole in the game. Like, yeah, right? She's a cheat code. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm a female. My God. We never right? saw this coming. What What do right? we do? <laughs> I, Destruction. I just rewatched <laughs> all three extended editions with my girlfriend last week. Because she Hero. loves it as well. Hero man. And oh my god, dude, I love Lord of the Rings. Have you you've seen the extended? Dude, either, they're like different movies. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're, they're so They're completely good. different movies. There's an extra like hour in each to one. To each movie, yeah, dude. dude the beautiful. whole like, Aragorn is so important in the extended. Thank you. I'm, they're, they like every keep, scene they, in the extended. I'm just like this needed to be in there. Yeah. Like no, it, this needed to be in the next one. This right? needed to be in there. Like, oh. like Sauron being like, oh, because Wormtail's like this guy showed up and he had a ring, and Sauron's like, oh, 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 you're gonna try to put the king back on the throne. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> and you're, that's not in the movies. Right. That, you know. They have these important things. And I'm just like these are like critical in right? points of information. And then the whole back and forth between Boromir and Aragorn. Oh, I remember that. Oh, it's, I'm getting goosebumps. Scene, Dude, every, uh, <laughs> every scene with Bar Baromir, I'm just like, okay, 
because they had him for so short. Right. You know, this is something that they needed in there, you know. And uh, I was talking to a friend a while ago, and they were like, Baromir is actually one of the most heroic oh, of the for fellowship. Sure. For sure. You know, Hands the, down. Yeah, the fact that he, not only, first of all, he's a human. So That's the, the most fact, important part. Yeah, the fact <laughs> that he was able to, you know, he lost his, he actually lost his willpower. And he got tempted by the ring yeah, and, like, went after Frodo, yeah. actually tried to grab it in Rivendell. Yeah. And then, you know, oh. his, his pure awesomeness was like, no, I'm better than this. Yeah. And it was like, bro, I'm, I'm sorry, Frodo, but... Uh, Let's, yeah. let's, let's get this handled. The Sorry, I just killed Norik. Like, yeah. That's my dude. The fact that, because um, my girlfriend hadn't seen them before. I was yeah. like, I'm about to change your oh. life. <laughs> oh. And the scene when they first get the ring in Rivendell, and they're all sitting yeah, around, and yeah. Boromir's like, I'm just going to grab it. I'm just going to grab it. And he so walks up, and Gandalf makes a storm spell, and yeah. he goes, you need to step away. You, and you're you like, took what? on yourself, human. Like, this is not, this is not, oh, don't do this. my God, it's so good. And Gandalf's like, don't tempt me. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I can't no, handle it. Was, I can't handle it. That was the coolest thing. I love it was those small intricacies and yes. in showing the levels and limits of their power. Ab absolutely. You know, even Gandalf was like, I know how powerful yeah, this is. Yeah, he's like, I'll destroy the I world I will, if I wear yeah, this. <laughs> I'll actually be the most powerful thing in existence if I have this ring. Don't do it, guys. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I love it so you much. Know? And I've seen them, I don't even know how many times. This is what I'm saying. I like, I, and I, I cry now. every time. <laughs> Dude, I am more emotional man. watching movies than I am in real life. I completely agree with you. You know, you just kind of completely, completely detach, become a part of it. Boromir dies, I'm lost. Tears. Every when time. Gandalf dies, every I know time. he's being a badass down there, but care. I'm still crying. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. It, uh, it doesn't help. No, it doesn't help. And then you got all the hobbits crying, and I was like, yeah, they, yeah. And, they, and they do it all in, like, slow motion, like Planet Earth, HD, freaking beautiful graphics. And you're uh, just like, I can see every particle of the tear. Stop. And oh. then Aragorn's just like, we got to get him up. And I was like, go. And then Boromir, give them a moment. Give them a moment, please. Oh, I can't handle it. Like, nah, sorry. Boromir dying in like the most heroic, badass Dude, way. Seriously. Like, oh. He's like, like, I'm not even going down, guys. I'm, Dude, I'm three like, arrows. And you saw, they hit him so hard, he like Dude, jolted first of all, back. Those were like two inch thick arrows. Those were yes. like lances. Okay, yeah. they were lances with some feathers in them. That's essentially uh, what they were. And he took three and kept three, fighting. Three. And it was like, nah. I, I got some fight left. I was like semi commentating behind the scenes stuff. I was like, okay, so here, <laughs> you know, here. like um, <laughs> when Aragorn's fighting Lurts, you know, yeah, the head yeah. Orkai, and he chucks the knife back at him and Aragorn blocks it, that was real. That Dude. wasn't, he wasn't supposed to throw it. Right? And Vigo Mortensen blocked he's it. He's like, no, I'm actually. Oh, he's really that's Aragorn. Aragorn. <laughs> he's, he actually is Aragorn. This is his normal self. And okay. then in the two towers, when they think Merry and Pippin got killed, yeah. and he kicks the helmet, he's like, ah, and falls yeah. over. He actually broke his foot kicking what? the helmet. That was I real. I know that part. Holy crap. Yeah. And when oh. you watch that scene again. Dude, that's so great. He kicked I, his heart and broke his foot. I guess I have to watch the whole series over again to get I the full mean, effects. That seems like the most logical thing. I mean, yeah, I, that I have um, the song Aragorn sings at his coronation at the end of the third. Oh. I have it saved on my phone. Get goosebumps every Dude, single time. That's too beautiful. When, oh. when he sees Arwen, I cry. I was like, <gasps> they've been through so Dude, much. They're together I, still. They've been through everything. They've been through I, it all. I bought, I've been with my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, January, it's been six years. So wow, very nice, long time. Man. That's Thank awesome. you. Thank you. She's something wrong with her to stick around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say our three year anniversary or something, yeah. I bought her the Evan Star pendant. Like Swarovski crystal, sterling silver, and I was like, "This is more for me than you." <laughs> this is more you for me than you. Like I love you, but this, this <laughs> yeah. is for me. Just I love you, and that's why I got you the real nice jewelry yeah. one. But this is way more me wishing oh. I was Aragorn. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's too true. It's I too, know. You, I you know. know. Sorry, you know. It's like, this serves both of us. It serves, it serves both of us. This is a win-win here. This is a win-win. <laughs> please just wear it for me, so that I feel please, like Aragorn. Please help me out, okay? And that's why she and she does. Oh, uh, touched my heart. Oh my God, wow, I love dude, Lord of the Rings so much. Man. It, it, it's a beautiful. It's tis a beautiful series. Yeah, absolutely, man. And Amazing. It's, like I said, it's it's one of my biggest inspirations. Um, it it really is like it is a starting point for anyone who loves fantasy. Absolutely. And it is a continuing point and foundation for anyone who of course. has always loved fantasy. Of course. You know, um, any person who's like, oh, I love swords and shields, watch Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Oh, I love magic. Watch Lord of the Rings. Right. Oh, mystical creatures. Watch Lord of the Rings. If right. it's anything <laughs> fantasy, watch Lord of the Rings because it is going to be the foundation of the intricacies of how they all work together. Absolutely. You know, seeing them going to Mor Moria, going fighting the goblins, the depths and darkness of the Dwarven Kingdom, the Balrog. The Balrog. So they <laughs> know the background of truly how powerful people can be in this in this world. You know, the bridge, the architecture. Uh, Legolas afterwards, he can't cry because, uh, you know, Elves can actually die from sorrow. You know, yeah. cool little intricacies like that where Legos can't allow himself to feel the true pain 
of losing Gandalf. Oh. You know, and he's been a friend forever because then you see The Hobbit and you're like, Legolas was helping him then. Right. You know, and he loved Gandalf then. Uh. So, so you, you know that these guys have this history. And then you feel the history. Oh, it's, uh, uh, can't handle it. Can't handle it. So oh, it's so great. I love the fact that, like, yeah, the little bits they put specifically with Legolas. Like, yeah. they're all, like, digging through the snow. He's walking on top yeah, of it. Yeah, he's just like, all right, guys, here we go. Oh. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a meme of Gandalf, like, tripping him with the staff. <laughs> <laughs> he, he would. He yeah, would. Yeah, exactly. He would. <laughs> like, I, I loved what, I mean, I loved literally everything about it. Everything. But <laughs> I love the dynamic between Legolas and Gimli. Easily one of the greatest things and representations of friends and how the different races of the world interacted. Right. You know, it, and then it was them passing boundaries, yeah, you know, because yeah. they're like, I'll die before they see the ring in yeah. the hands of an elf. To, exactly. I'm totally cool dying beside a friend. Yeah. You know, and, and a movie, and the thing is, it wasn't even the same movie. It's exactly. Like it was the over fellowship three. happens, <laughs> and then by the third movie, they are greater friends than anyone you've ever seen. Yes. You know, oh, I love it so much. I love that. You know, Legolas <laughs> is having fun. Dude is smiling, fighting yes. alongside oh, Gimli. The, the Battle of Helm's Deep, when they're standing, and Gimli's like, yeah, yeah. I can't I see can't anything. See. I can't see. Don't worry, there's it's a lot like, of them. He's <laughs> like, do you want me to describe it to you? Or would you rather me grab you a box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Gimli just... <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Legolas made it funny. Elves, God, I love it so much. got it. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, absolutely, you know. And like oh. I said, it, it, is, it is a foundation. For sure. You know? For sure. And I, I love... I, I love... One of the things I love about Lord of the Rings that I also love about Star Wars is they're so expansive yeah. as far as the world that absolutely. you can be like, oh, I'm going to write a story about a soldier of Gondor that we haven't heard of. Yeah, you and, know? and you could do it, and, and maybe at any period in time, yep. don't even care, is a continuation of this lore, of this yes. world. It's big enough you know? of a world that like we can all fit in it. Exactly. I love it. You know, you come over, you, you come up with any race you want, and you have a big enough world to put them anywhere you want. It's so yes, cool. these deserty lizard type, type people. I believe you. It's Lord of the Rings. You can do whatever you right. want, man. It's set. Magic. It's across the river. Got it. It works. It works. <laughs> We're good. Let's make it happen. If we got lemmas bread, <laughs> <laughs> we can make it happen. It's like one bite can fill the stomach of a full man. And yeah. How many have you had? Pippin's like three. Oh. <laughs> That's a hobbit. Three? Or is that bad? Or <laughs> well. <laughs> you know, it's those little things, man. And that's it's what, perfect. You know, that's what inspires fantasy writers to, to know that every aspect of the world is something you should care about. You of know, course. The food. You should care about the food. Care right? about magic involved with food. Care about uh, magic involved with boots. Yes. You know, um, when mithril will, armor. Yeah, mithril armor. Dude. Something as simple as that. Just, hey, we found a metal better than everything. Yeah, it's dragon and scale shirt. Exactly. You know, and I'm like, this is fucking awesome. Right? This is great. That's, <laughs> you know, that's the other thing. Like it's like seeing the hobbits as well, you know, and then you meet Balin. And yes. then you're like, oh, sweet. Then you get to the first one. And you're like, oh, Balin's dead. I knew him. Oh, you know, oh, or in the extended editions, when they talk about the mithril shirt, and he's like, oh, yeah, Bilbo got it from Thorin. And Gimli's yeah. like, that's a kingly gift. That's You're like, kingly gift. I was there. Yes, I was there. I, I saw it happen. Oh, my God. I was Sting. there. Sting. Sting. I know Gimli. where they found when the sword. You, see the, you know, when you see how everything connects. Beautiful. You know, that's the, like the, the biggest thing in fantasy, and they just did it perfectly. That's just know? great storytelling. Indeed. That's why Indeed. a lot of people hate the prequels of Star yeah. Wars. Yeah, yeah. I love them. I, do. I love all of Star Wars. And yeah. I love the prequels mainly because of the story. Agreed. You know, in episode four, Ben is like, oh, I fought in the Clone Wars. We know what that is we now. We know what that is now. Before we didn't. Yes. You know, exactly now we get that. like, we see Darth Vader and he's the most terrifying person ever because he's dead inside. Yes. When before you're like, oh, he's scary. Now he's like scary now, and tragic. Yeah, now you know exactly, you know, the, just the depth of this dude's tragedy. That's just tragedy. good storytelling. Exactly. You know, you know the, these, those are the elements that make these things so immersive. Agreed. You know, they, they make people keep coming back because they're like, there is no end to this story. Exactly. But it's so good. I need to see where they keep going. Right. You know, to try and end this story. Exactly. Even though it's unendable. No, nope, which is great. <laughs> exactly. I'm for a fanboy, you're just no like, complaints. I'm just going to be happy forever. Just be happy forever. Where? There's injustice. Doesn't matter. Dude, I've got Star Wars. I don't even care. I'm good. <laughs> right. What's that? Oh, well, um, Legolas is still in Mirkwood. Great. Sounds good to <laughs> and, me. That's, that's I'm going to worry about goes. Mirkwood. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. man. So oh. you've done reenactments. Yes, sir. As far as combat goes. Yes, yes, I have. How did you get into that? Um, so I'm not like a professional, you know, reenactor, war master, right. or anything. Um, but you but swung I, a hammer. Yes, I have. <laughs> you know, I, I worked at the Renaissance Fair. It is now my fifth year working there. Nice. And so, um, you know, literally just getting to know everyone there. You know, getting to know the family there. Um, getting to know the, oh my God, the, the, how immersed those guys are sure. into the world of the medieval Renaissance era. You know. Uh, actually seeing a carpenter work, seeing a blacksmith 
creates armor. Right. You're seeing a man forge a new sword, and then tomorrow he's like, hey, here's a sword. And you're like, I, dude, I saw you make that from a molten pool of metal. Oh, my Magic. God. Magic. Magic, straight <laughs> up. You know, you look at these things, and nowadays these are like these phenomenal acts of, my God, human ingenuity. Back then, dude, there were blacksmiths everywhere. They had right? to be. You know, they, these were how people protected themselves. And, you know, it's the same with gunsmiths nowadays. We have them everywhere. There's gun shops everywhere. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, it's cool seeing how the world is, a lot of it is still the same, just in a different technology, you know, yeah. technological thing. You know, we still have the abundance of, you know, these people doing this, these people doing this. Technology has just aided it immensely. But sure. some people are able to do it by hand, who take the time to learn this talent and this skill. You're like, okay, respect easily earned. Oh, for you know? sure. So definitely uh, it's it's helped me learn different aspects of the Renaissance era, but also give me opportunities to get involved with right. you know the sword play, the sword fighting, the, the acting, the immersion into Absolutely. the world itself. And the fair, you know, getting to help out people, getting to, to say, hey, guys, come see this cool sword fighting. Come see these jousters. Come see this. Come see that. Right. And, you know, immersing new people into this world of fantasy and imagination. Right. So, I was just at a Renaissance fair two or three weeks ago in oh, Sarasota. Nice. And oh, dude, I, I love that one. I love jousting. I just love watching it because I'm just like, I'm back in the old times. Give me a giant absolutely. turkey leg, you know? Oh, dude, absolutely. <laughs> and I'll this they, they both got unhorsed, oh, which I hadn't God. seen before. I've what? seen jousting, but I've, I've never, never seen, seen them both knock each other off. Oh. And, dude, the other guy didn't get up for like three minutes. Oh, no, yeah. I was like, oh. No, because, yeah, you know, you're in 100-pound armor. And it can pinch sometimes. And, and falling off a big horse yeah, you're with the off. impact of a lance breaking on you. Exactly. So you're taking the hit from a lance, which is automatically t sucking the air out of you. Yeah, that then hurts. Then you fall, <laughs> hopefully, on your stomach or your back. And he went right on his back. You know, <laughs> once you go on your back, now you lost the air. Then you lose the rest of your air. And then you're just like, <gasps> okay, really I'm going to be here for a bit, guys. Exactly. Relax. I can't get up. I, I cannot get no, up. I can't get up. <laughs> Life alert, please. Which is so hardcore. It's We're like, yes. Dude, right? You know, like, he's badass. For the kingdom. <laughs> for the kingdom. So yeah. what was your first fight like? Um, well, I know it's all, I know it's a stage. Yeah, yeah. Let me thing. you know. Let me say you yeah. weren't like trying to kill the guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not For real. Him. Um, it's a lot of learning about the directions your attacks can go. Right. Um, you know, there's the one which is on the upper right, two upper left, three, four, five is on top. Um, so each of the numbers have a corresponding location. Um, it's the easiest way for people to start learning stage fighting. Right. You absolutely. know, people will start with okay, um, this combo will be a a four, a two, a swipe a reverse three, and then a five. Sure. And then once you say that, okay, now we both know how it's going to be, um, and there are unique ways to block each of those attacks. Okay, Correct. Okay, a new, unique way to block the one, the two, the three, the four, and then the five. And right. you have the, once you can do that, you start just being able to go with those as the basics. All right, this is going to be a 20-step fight. One, five, four, three, 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 two, swipe, thrust, four, four, three, one. Right, right. And at that point, you know, to other people, you're just like, what the what? Absolutely. But then to the sword fighters, you know, they've been they've been practicing that number that sequence of numbers so much, it looks fluid. It looks yes. well trained. It looks like they meant to do these attacks. Very much so. Know? That's so. cool that they did numbers because I I did ke I did kendo for a bunch of years. Yeah, yeah. And I when I taught people like crash oh. courses, I use numbers as well. Exactly. Sorry, this is one. This is two. You block mm -hmm. it by mirroring it. Yes. You know. Exactly. So it's like you know, if it's you do a one, do a one, and it'll it'll block his. Oh, look at that. Oh, look you at know? that. You know, and it's the easiest way to teach them, and then from there you can start making up. You know your own cool techniques, your own cool exactly. movements. Exactly. Okay. Do a quick little spin thing. Yeah, between thing. a two and a four, add a roll and a thrust and a parry and a this and a that. Right. You, know, you make it work. Um, but my first stage fight. Sure. Um, you know, it was one of those simple sequences where it's okay. Um, do a two, a one, a three, a four. I'm going to swipe. You will dodge. We'll have a cool. Ha ha! You almost got me. Right. Ah, <laughs> you almost did as well. <laughs> Your king smells of elderberries. Yeah, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the only thing you have those little dialogues in between, yeah, yeah. and you know, to the audience, to the to the kids watching, these are two well-trained, awesome fighters going right. at it, and it's such an experience, you know. It's show business. Exactly. You know, so it's it's a really great event. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah, man. So that's that was my first experience. It was a simple fight. But it's it's a fight I'm never gonna forget. Sure. You know? Who was it against? Um, it was sort of a good friend of mine, uh, Larry, actually. Larry. Larry what did Larry so, use? Did um, you both have swords? We both had uh, long rapiers. Nice. So they were uh, more of the traditional, actually pretty much a long sword, but with a rapier handle. So it's a thicker version of the what the people think a fencing, 
you know, like rapier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very With the little cage. Exactly. You know, it's a little cage. You know, there's like the little cage and like those very small point. These like long sword rapiers are ah, okay. You know, thicker versions of the rapier. So long sword. You know, the weight, the thickness, the 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 bruntness of a long sword, but with the perfect cage of like a rapier that completely def you know defends your hand, allows maximum control of the weapon, still allows thrusting. Sure. It's a long weapon, allowing excellent parrying technique. So you can do a heck of a lot with this amazing weapon. Of and, course. You know, as you're doing the fight, it just looks pretty as heck. Of you course. So you can do quick little flourishes. Absolutely. Yeah, as you're making the flourishes. <laughs> And it's yeah, shining right? and it's beautiful. <laughs> I oh, am Eduardo. <laughs> exactly, I'm Eduardo. <laughs> so That's awesome. dude, it's a lot of fun, man. What uh, what weapons have you used since then? Um, oh man, I've practiced with a, a battle axe, warhammer, longsword, halberd, spear. Nice. Um, and, you know, um, with the actually with the dag guys, well, they're foam fighting guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, they obviously have a, another array of weapons. You know, they have the twin blades, the the hammers, the enormous freaking glaives of destruction. Right. You know, and, <laughs> Even, you know, even though they're not real weapons, they are still practiced in the techniques of, of how to use weapons, you know, the stances of how to use weapons. So it's always excellent practice, always excellent way to continue the involvement in learning and caring about the technique of, of using course. a weapon, you know. So even if you don't get a stage right always, um, I'm sorry, I love foam fighting. It's really cool. You know? Same. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a... I'm sorry, I don't know. To me, it's the same as like MMA. Dude, you beat the Marvin crap out of your friend like and have fun. sounds like the coolest thing ever. I promise, <laughs> dude. I got, I got to take you out sometime. It's the coolest I thing I would thing. love oh, that. Absolutely, dude. I'll destroy people. <laughs> oh, absolutely, it's so fun. I learned, I learned on a katana. Mm -hmm. That's like my weapon. If I get a katana, I will clear a room. I'm oh, good. dude, it's beautiful, dude. They're, but, you know, dude, they have oh, katanas. They're like the coolest weapons oh, out there. I'll um, handle. Yeah, dude. There are people who go out there. And they and actually, you know, they'll fight kendo. They'll go oh, out there yeah. with a katana, and they're like, "Come at me, bro." Right. Block, block, block. Please. You're dead. Block, yeah, block, right. You're dead. Block, and block, block, your neck. So then, yeah. So <laughs> then you know, you see people. They'll see this person. They're like, okay. Here's just like upper level dude. Like guys, we need to join forces to stop right. this guy. He He'll can't have, block yeah, everyone. <laughs> you know, there's a dude who have like a spear, a dude with a shield and like a, a sword, and another with a great sword, and they all like team up on the one katana guy. It'll work. <laughs> He'll still take out like two of them. Right. Yeah. And then like, I'm just not like, going down on my own. Crap. You, you know? get that moment. I always when I, when I used to fight multiple opponents, yeah. one I'm like, all right, cool, I could kind of figure it out, go a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When there's two and they try to flank me, I get in this like anime mode. Do you I was have like, to? Whoosh, you have this to. is it. You, ready. You, gotta do <laughs> you know, completely peripherals waiting for movement. <laughs> yeah. You're dead. <laughs> yeah, I promise. That's exactly what it is. It's so great, man. You, you would love it. I got to take you out some time, dude. Please. Absolutely, man. What is your favorite weapon you've used so far? Um, Because they all have their different Absolutely. Things. They all have you know, strength it's like weaknesses. Um, it's between the halberd and greatsword. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the classic just two-handed sword that, you know, frankly – Swords are among the most mobile and efficient weapons, Agreed. I would say. You know, not only do you have the cross guard or the hilt, which allows protection, you yes. know, oftentimes it was known for a knight to grab it by the blade. And yes. use the yeah, and you know, use the hilt to crash in the helmet of an enemy because the entire weapon is a weapon. Oh yes. You know, the size of it, the the back of it, the pommel, you can hit someone in the head. Metal hurts anywhere it's hit. Yes. You know, <laughs> very much so. pommel you in the temple, that could kill you. Yeah, you could kill you. you Absolutely. Know? So uh, the, and be, being a great sword, they have a lot of weight behind it. It only makes it that much more devastating. Yes. <laughs> you know? so, I mean, even in the uh, foam fighting, uh, I'll use a great sword, and it allows just, you know, it has nearly the range of like a spear. You know, you lunge right. out and it has a range of a spear, but then you come back and you have an awesome defense, and then you can still have the heavy power attacks. Which can you know, break through a defense. Yeah, they'll it's break like through defenses, break through shields after two hits. Right. Um, they ignore, you know, parries and stuff like that. It's really cool stuff like that. Sure. Um, and so I've, I've just loved the strength of a great sword. Um, but then the halberd, I love the, the technical strength of a halberd. Yes. Because you can stab with it like a spear, but then you can bring it You've back. You've got the axe head yeah, as well. Yeah, you got the axe head, so you bring it back, and then it's a great axe, you know, and that you can use effectively, and then you use the pole as a defensive staff. And then right. You right back around, and you have a spear. It's very versatile. So, heck yeah, man, very versatile, and it offers that range. You know, that I love. I'm glad you brought up using the the pommel as a weapon. I used to have this move where if we had yeah. katanas and they were locked, I would always move his down Absolutely. and get him in right in the face. With yeah, the back dude, of it. no, it works. I was like, it works really fine, dude. If it's hey. life or death. Hey, dude, I'm telling you, you, know, you do what you have to do. You throw in you kicks, survive. you knock people over. That's like, uh, you know, the samurai had kendo, but then yeah. when it got close range, straight to judo. Yeah, hatchet. It's like, if you, I can grab you, you're going I'm, over I'm it. going I'm to grab you. you. It simply is more efficient to throw you down, and I can stab you all I want. You know? Right, exactly. <laughs> or, you know, break a limb if I got to. I'll do what I have to do. I Do you like Game of Thrones? 
Uh, I do. I do like. Game I of love Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Is have you read the books? Good. I have not. I'm sorry. Gotta read Forgive the books, me, man. people. I have not. Gotta read the books. I know. No, my mom has, and you know, she's like, the show's nice, but bro, the oh, detail in the books. Dude, the books. Here's the only bad thing about the books. Yeah. They will ruin the show for you. Oh. Not spoilers ruin, yeah, just yeah. quality ruin. Oh no no! I remember that uh, it's it's actually pretty different in the books. It's like, very A lot different. of characters are either dead or you know some I, are alive, stuff like that. I watched the first two seasons and I was like, I really like the show. I'm gonna read the books. Yeah. And then I read all five books before the next season, and oh, uh, I, I oh, this last season I was like, I didn't even like it because I was oh. like, you changed so many things. Oh my god! And man. dude, if you like Lord of the Rings, yeah, you will like Game of Thrones. Oh it's no, absolutely. A, it's a, it's I like completely a, agree. it's an adulty version. Like there's way more like rape and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's like you know, there's nudity. There's and all like that stuff. talking about food. That's why I'm glad you brought up food. And there the red wedding, you know, oh which everyone knows. God. Or the purple wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The purple wedding, the better okay. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the purple wedding, there's like six pages of food description. Stop. Dead serious. That's gorgeous. Because Joffrey is like, this is going to be the most extravagant wedding ever. This is and why. And they just, they cooked this with this, and the meat had leets, and this is cooked oh, with butter. And they butter. just describe like, it all, and it's just. Food. Oh. And then I remember reading the first book, and I was outside, just like in a chair. I was like, I'm going to mm. read outside. And I'm reading it, and they talk about how cold it is, and I felt cold. Dude, yeah. It's man. one of the best books I've ever read. Dude, just no, absolutely. You know, like, I, I, I literally speaking. You oh, know? It's dude. amazing. But. God, the characters, you mm. care about them so much because the the chapters are told from the character's perspective. Mm. So when there's an Arya chapter, you're in her head. And she thinks yeah. like a little girl. Okay. So you care so much more because oh you know them. Yeah, so when yeah, they yeah. die, it's the worst feeling oh of your life. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but you will love this because the Red Wedding. Oh, all right? God. Dude, the I've pain. never cried reading a book. Yeah. But when it got to the Red Wedding, there's something I've mentioned before. Out of the entire series, you know, you'll get, like, bits of, like, yeah, this yeah. really spoke to me, and I will remember forever. Exactly. So even if it's, like, pat on the shoulder, wow, that changed my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Red Wedding, <laughs> when it happens, uh, you know you know what the phrase, kill the Starks, right? Yeah. It started playing the Reigns of Castamere, and then just crossed bows flying, and then the phrase rushed in and killed everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob got shot. Okay, he got shot twice, took two bolts, fell over. You know every one of his men in the books. Oh. So in the show, you're like, that oh sucks, he lost his men. God. In the books, you're like, God, no, the Jesus, small John yeah, you Umber. Know you know? they, they kill them all. You've known oh them for a while. Gosh. But what's rough is Rob takes two bolts and he falls over. Small John Umber. Yeah. Okay, I want you to remember. Great John Umber is the guy who's like, I'm not going to take orders from some boy. And then Grey yeah. Wynn bite, bites his finger off. Oh, my he's God. Like, yeah. Your meat is pretty tough. <laughs> okay. He has a son who's yeah. just as big as he is. And he's like a bear person. Oh, my God. Small John Umber is his name. I want yeah. you to remember for when small you read the John, books. Okay. Small John number. the second Rob goes down, the first thing he does is he picks up a table, throws it over his king to protect him from more bolts, and then just starts attacking. And he gets killed right away. Oh, my God. But that, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it because I'm like, they this man. They you know him, and you know just. And the fact that his first thought was to protect his king. Yeah. I was like, I'm crying, and I'm just like. And then he That's dies. and then everyone. The knows. honor, just like I couldn't take. You know, my heart just sinks, and I'm like, no, dude, I, I, yeah, wow. I promise you. You know, in like, shows, you I know, feel like we're on the matters. same level with that Absolutely. as far as feel, you know, and just think of what's going on. Put yourself mm -hmm. in that position, and his first thought is to protect his king. <laughs> and I was like, oh, uh, like I'm crying just thinking about it, mm -hmm. you know. Dude, and I'm not serious, like that man. kind of dude in real life, but I understand. Uh, it's serious. It gets serious. Oh, like, I can't. Uh, yo, the, the <laughs> feels are real. Okay. I, but you have to read the books. Uh, no, I will. Trust I will. Me. I will. I know. I, I, everyone's been suggesting it to uh, me. I'm, uh, I'm slacking. Amazing. I will. And you'll read them fast too, yeah. because you've seen the show. You know the exactly. names, yeah, so know it's easier to pick up. But book three is where it'll differentiate. Okay, okay. But two, they start changing stuff in the show. Three, they completely change. Oh. By now, it's like it's just it's wrong. It's just a completely different story. Like the most, I mean, about pretty much this whole last season was off book. Yeah. But Brienne and Sansa never meet, ever. Sansa oh. never leaves the veil. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, oh, Oberyn's wow. pretty spot on. Uh, Jamie Lannister never goes to Dorne. This is awkward. Yeah, yeah. The, that's why <laughs> I was like, when they're like, Jamie's going to Dorne. I was like, why, why? would he go to Dorne? Why does he need to? Yeah. So, it's uh, it's so wrong. The show. Damn. Okay. The show's amazing. Like this last season, for sh people who haven't read the books, was like the best season ever. Yeah, You're the like, show, the oh, Brienne cool. that cool. uh, that's awesome. It's like that's eh, not but how it it's went. It's just not. Jack and Hagar being the old man that's training Arya. That's mm. not. That's not it. Dang it's dude. an old man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just just small dude. I mean. The books are so good. My, okay. my biggest okay. thing, you know what got me? Yeah. That, like, the, the moment where I was like, I can't do this show anymore. Oh, what? Was when they killed Barristan. What? Barristan's still alive. 
Barristan is one of my favorite characters. Oh, wow. Because Barristan the Bold yeah. is a living legend. So much so that like he meets Ned and he goes, it's a good thing we never fought. And Ned's like, oh, yeah, because I don't think my wife would be a very good widow. He's Whoa. like, you would have killed me. Okay, Whoa. Barristan is one of the greatest knights who ever lived. Yeah. When Jamie Lannister says to Brienne, he's like, there's maybe three people in the whole room that can take me, and you're not one of them. He was mentioning Barristan. Barristan could have killed Jamie Lannister. That's so cool. Oh my god. I that's so love great. Barristan. That's so and great. When we watch the episode, all right, you know, they're in the hallway and Grey yeah. Worm's about to die. The music plays, the guy falls over, and it's Barristan. I paused it and I told my girlfriend, I was like, I've waited five Dude, years for this. This is the moment. Oh my god. And then he died. And my girlfriend's like, wait, he is dies? That, I was like, no! <laughs> oh, the no, dude. Just the fact that I paused it. <laughs> and uh, I was like, this is it. <laughs> uh, like, shenanigans. Yeah, I was just like, he wouldn't lies. have died. I will tell you, the Barristan in the book wouldn't have died. He's that good. There's a scene when he's in her bedchamber, yeah. and some guy comes to kill her. And Bar and I was like, I can't, I tweeted the guy. I was like, dude, I can't wait to see you fight. I cannot no, I wait, wait to see I you fight. Wait. I was like, I've read the chapter, and yeah. the actors read the books. Oh. So he was really surprised. He's like, wait, a minute, I'm not going to make it? That's not how. And they're like, That's sorry, man. That's not what happened. I, what are you but doing? He, he, this guy comes in to kill Daenerys, and he's like one of the best pit fighters for forever. Barristan's yeah. this old knight. And I kid you not, he goes, this is what I was born for. And he oh takes his sword out. God. And this guy's doing flourishes. Three moves killed him. Stop. Oh, uh, God, I can't that's handle so it. Great. I, can, I can feel my like my, my heart beating. Yeah, faster. man. Oh, dude, you, you like you, you dude, like to get hyped, dude. That's uh, I, I know. understand, dude. dude I'm, I'm a guy like that. It's man. these things, you know. It's my fandoms that get me like. Oh, oh you're oh, dude. You're, oh. You are good. I understand. I, I'm sorry. I'm like I'm sorry to relate to anime. But I'm sorry, but I, I love no, dude, anime. Dude, anime is like, great. Um, even with the, like the <clears throat> yes, <laughs> even, you know, even with the new, <laughs> the, the new One Punch. Um, oh, uh, an anime that I you had me watch it. You posted about it. I was like, I'm gonna watch One Punch Man. I just love people are dying. He's on the news. He, he's I like, guess. All right. <laughs> like, oh, enough of that. All right. <laughs> Meteor's coming down. Punch. Right. All right. Enough of that. Who are you? I'm a guy that does it for fun. What? Fun, man. It's final what form. One punch. <laughs> one punch. Dude. First of all, his normal form is just his eye. He yeah. has a final form. It's when he gets serious. Okay. His <laughs> eyes get awesome. His muscles like just yeah. <laughs> ripple. And then he's like, I'm going to destroy you. Like he's like, he hasn't even eh. used a serious punch yet. Eh. Okay. He's like, I guess. Oh my God. Let me just tell you, <laughs> right. dude. He uses a serious punch later on in, yeah? the, like, in, the, in the manga. Sorry, I call okay. it the manga. Um, there's a character, and he's fighting him, and he's like, fine, I'll get serious. Oh, no. Serious punch. And he, like, throws <laughs> the punch. The shockwave of the punch wraps around the earth and creates a V <laughs> in the cloud covering that goes across the curvature of the planet. Oh, my God. So, like, God. he punches, and it's just like, what? a V. That like oh uh, he splits the clouds of earth. Oh my okay? god. And this is just one serious punch. Uh. Okay. Not not because <laughs> he's done a normal punch, a series of normal punches. Sure. Then a serious punch. I saw the one of the dude, I saw the gif. I think you posted of the guy, he hits him right in the nuts and he's like, Oh I'm oh, sorry. Dude, I'm, it was I just lifted my hand. Even, yeah, it was my hand, man. It was momentum. <laughs> the guy I'm so ran sorry. into his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, it was, it was oh, too funny. That reminds me of like Yamamoto. Yes. The first time you see him in Bleach, and he goes, "Hold on," <laughs> takes his kimono off. You're like, "Oh, what this the dude!" Oh, uh, or Kimpachi. I yes. guess I'll use two hands now. Mm -hmm. You're like, <gasps> "What?" So, yeah. Oh. Dude, I, I, what character was? Uh, there was a character like that in like one of the Final Fantasies where he's like, "I just choose not to fight my other hand." It's right? not fair to the enemy. Yeah, he's like, "I'm." Yeah. A, it's like in Princess Bride. I'm yeah. actually right-handed. I'm actually right-handed. <laughs> I'm, I'm fighting with, with my left. <laughs> And That's the guy's like, I'm right-handed too. Ah, ah. <laughs> Dude, that was one of the coolest things. I, I love little things like that where, you know, you don't even notice it. You know, those are things that you don't have to say. In, in Princess Bride, you know, you see them fighting, you're using a left hand, you don't even notice it. Right. Until they say something, you're like, oh, wow, that is a really cool small thing to add. You know, um, King Theoden in Lord of the uh. Rings, he's left-handed. And so yes, it's, he a, is. it's I a did small thing that. that they just never say. But, you know, you see him, he unsheathes the sword with his left hand, everyone else is with his right hand. It's a small little, you know, note yep. in the book. But they made sure to get in this small... It's important. Just, you know, it's He's left-handed. You That's start who falling in love with the character because you just... It's just who he is, you know? Exactly. It's not like it's weird. He is just this. Exactly. You know? So those are the small it's little things. It's just one more bit to him. Like, they had his left-handed. Exactly. You know? I love it. I noticed that as well because the sheath is on the wrong side. Yeah, exactly. That's on the right uh, side for him. <laughs> I love these things, man. I love these uh, things. Yeah, I always wanted to have an office with the Swords of Kings from fandoms that I love. Yes. Get like Rob Stark sword. Get yes. ice. I, I, I gotta get um Conan sword. Oh I yeah. Get Conan sword. You know, I gotta get 
<sighs> gotta get the Master Blade. I got. Gotta get a key. Andoril blade. is like my bucket list sword. Yeah, I have to get all the swords, uh, man. Like just everything. The runes down it. It's reforged Narsil. I just love that. You'll remember this sword. Stop. You're like, <gasps> Stop. It's so good. Like, dude, like all the all the famous weapons in their world, you know, have those inscriptions on it. Like that's just another aspect of the story. You're you're falling in love with because you're just like, hey, the, right? The, the 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 forging of these blades. Oh yes. These are the fancy stories that you know help me create the fantasy world of you know cathedral. You know, it's sure. They, you know, they help me understand how to handle the small intricacies of the world. You know, how to handle the difference between the different magic users of my world. You know, the right. mages versus the wizards versus like the magician. You know, how are they different versus a priest or a cleric or, you know, a paladin, stuff like that. Right. So, you know, how these cultures interact and how they've interacted over the last 2,000 years of the fantasy story. Yes. You know, there's, all, there's characters who live for hundreds of years. They are doing things for these hundreds of years. So yeah. how are they affecting the world, what's happening? You know, you have these named characters. These are the main ones who are important because they are, when you've lived for 300 years, you are affecting what's going on around you. Yes. You know, no matter what you say or think, you are affecting it. For sure. You know, so... It's always those those aspects I love learning about in uh, in fancy stories like Game of Thrones. When you're like, ah, oh, this ruins. They've been around for 800 years. You're right? like, okay, well, who built them? Then they tell you the story. The elves built them 800 years ago to stop this and these and those people. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, little backstory going on. That's exactly. Really cool. You're you know, like, you wow, looking. can you imagine what's been through here? That's why yeah. I love swords passed down. I was like, exactly. who held this sword? Who's held this sword? What has this done? Story? Yeah, you want to learn the background of the sword. Who's wielded these swords? Who has had these and killed with these weapons yes you know so exactly. i always love those aspects uh, they, swords. these swords have changed history you know you know they've, so, been, they've been parts of history the blood they've spilled have changed whether or not middle earth survived right whether or not you know west Ross survives uh, so you know I always so love. cathedral yes sir that is your thing oh uh, yes sir cathedral it is a game chess. yes sir how do you go about creating a game talk to me about cathedral how did um, you come okay. up with well, it? Well, uh, my father created the game when uh, he was in high school. Really? Um, but yeah, yeah. He, I did not know. But Speaking he, of history. <laughs> oh, yeah. Heck yeah, man. You know, so he created it, but it was the foundations of the rules, you know, the okay. foundation of the story. Um, he wasn't able to finish it because he went to the Marines. Okay. So uh, I found it my junior year of high school, and I was like, Dad, what, what is this? And he's like, oh, well, it was an idea I had a while ago. And I'm like, my God, this is beautiful. And so... Um, you know, I've got it all together, got the story together, filled in all the loopholes over a period of three years, um, you know, beta testing the game and whatnot. We finally uh, got into a book, and um, it's published with our publishing company, Visual Adjective. So it actually nice. is, like, owned by me and my parents. Um, it's our publishing company. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were able to, you know, publish the book. You know, we were able to worry about the layout process, the editing process, um, how to get the ISBN number, uh, how to get it um, into Library of Congress, then how to get in, like, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, things like that. Sure. So... You know, we got the book printed, um, and, you know, so we're starting to go to different shops, you know, uh, Tate's, Docking Bay, Past, Present, Future, uh, Hey, Wanna Play, Sunshine Gamings, all, you know, a lot of different, these Florida shops, because we're based out of Florida, you know, sure. so we're based out of Palm Beach, actually, um, and we, you know, go to these different shops to play test the book, uh, get the book sold in these different shops, and, you know, just spread the awareness. Of course. Uh, with the, actually, we're now releasing the second edition of the book. Along with it, we're going to be, you know, working on the social media aspect of the book. Nice. Uh, working on hopefully getting miniatures soon, actually. Nice. So we'll have our own custom miniatures with the book. So that'll be really cool. Oh, that's um, awesome. It won't just be a story. It'll be a story with the actual board itself and with pieces you can play on the board. You know, nice. um, what I tell everyone, though, you can play with any chess set. If you have a chess set, put a red dot on one of the knight pieces, and now you have a paladin. You know? Right. <laughs> so it's, you know, use of imagination. It is an RPG on a chessboard. You know, your characters have health, armor, accuracy, movement, weapons. Um, and with these stats, they do not change, just like chess. So once you learn these stats, it becomes intuitive, just okay. like chess. You right. know, like all the tabletop games, it is, or tabletop games, sorry, <laughs> it is complex. But once you learn it, you know it. Sure. You know it forever and your opponent knows it. You have this exact same pieces. Because of this, it allows you to play. After a while, you don't even need the book. You're playing and it's, okay, roll dice. I know it, I, you both know what you need. Sure. Okay, you do damage. Okay, I know how to defend myself. Okay, you defend, moving on. Next turn. So, you know, it keeps the intensity of chess, but the immersion of role playing games. Right, you know? right. That's so cool. No, thank it's you like so a much. family affair. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's you know, so um, my, my awesome. dad uh, has his own book uh, for the company. And uh, he actually does a lot of the art for the company. So he okay. does, uh, you know, a lot of the He does the art. sweet drawings yeah, yeah, and all that? Lot of That's your dad uh, that does uh, that. Oh, no, no. He's actually, uh, right now, he's actually at work at a different location. Oh, okay. So he's, you know, he's doing his own thing right now. Um, <laughs> this <But>. is awesome. <laughs> he, uh, he, you know, he's, he's our biggest supporter. Yeah. You know? So it's always awesome having him. 
uh, and when he, you know, he's the artist. So, you know, people are making these, uh, their novels and whatnot, and he's running the covers for them. So it's really ah, awesome. I love that's it. So cool. I love the art. I have I have a print of it yeah, dude, that you yeah, gave me. Yeah, with the king man. looking all oh, awesome yes. and the knight in the back. So sexy, ah. you know. So you know, I've done the art for my book, uh, and he's done the art for you know the other novels and whatnot uh, that okay. we've printed. So you know, it's awesome. We work together for it. You know. Right, right. Whichever one you want is here. Oh my God, those cabbages are too adorable. I want a cabbage. My good sir. The cabbage man is making magic happen. My God, the technique, this poise, this skill, the temptation of this man's talent. My God. The smiley face, unrivaled skill, unparalleled talent, a man drawing like no other man before him. This man, this one man, this cabbage man is drawing a smiley face unlike any other I've ever seen. My God. And he is finished. A masterpiece has been created and the cabbage man strikes again. Oh, but of course, there's more. He actually signs the cabbage. My God, the curves. Fantastic. <laughs> Brother man got the cabbages. I guess, uh, and now, Jedi Brian. Yeah, all of, I could. Literally I could. all of my intros that I record for these, because I do like an intro, yeah. and then my theme song, the podcast, and my theme oh. song. The intros, nice. I work like midnight to six. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I've stayed up all night. I worked, and I'm like, I guess I'll record the intro now. I guess I'll record it. So they're the always intro. like, hey, hey. Uh, my guest was awesome. Totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, I had a plan. Edward's it's voice gone. is great. Listen to it. Oh, stop. Boop. <laughs> I'm all right. I, I have moments. Yeah, <laughs> All of your moments. And now a man listen, shall speak. Listen to it. This poor lady with her hat and her cabbages. <laughs> in she a speaks. world. <laughs> in a world with one girl and her cabbage. <laughs> in one corner we have a man who deems himself worthy. Is he worthy? Today we shall find out. And in another corner we've got a bad Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> God himself. Andy Dufresne. <laughs> <laughs> swim through 50 yards. Yeah, swim through 50 yards. <laughs> of stink I don't even want to God versus God like. <laughs> Who will win? So you're saying one punch man versus Morgan Freeman. That's what I'm hearing. Ooh. I'm just saying. It seems like a pretty fair fight. I'm just saying. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you have a booth. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cathedral. Uh, yes, sir. Family affair. Uh, it is cathedral. Uh, but Oh, see you later, good peoples. <laughs> Date easy, people. Um, but, oh, sorry, uh, at the booth, uh, we are actually Visual Adjectives. Um, okay. That is my publishing company. Perfect. Um, and as Visual Adjectives, the entire, all three uh, tables are, are ours. So on awesome. one table we have, you know, Carpe Nocturne, um, our goth, sci-fi, steampunk, fantasy magazine. Sure. Um, and then it's also split with other novels that we've uh, published and created, I So guess. you have novels? Yes, we also sell novels. Oh. Uh, we have novels, uh, Carpe Nocturne, the magazine. We're starting to make a comic. We have graphic novels that we're going to be creating. Yes. Um, and so, really, we publish anything. We publish all of the creative vehicles that allow someone's creativity and idea and concept to get to their audience. You know? gotcha. And then we have all the artwork from the different artists, uh, the prints for sale. Uh, and, of course, yeah, we have Cathedral. So, I love you know, that. We have all of the different aspects of geekdom really available, you know. How correlated is Cathedral to actual chess? Um, it's played on a chessboard, um, but each of the characters have stats, health, armor, accuracy. Okay. Um, but like chess, the stats do not change. Once you learn it, it becomes this intuitive game. Uh, sure. You know, you know to worry does, I know to worry does. So just like chess, once you move your knight up, okay. He is a power piece. I need to take care about where he is moving. He has that classic L flanking maneuver. You know, okay. I could either leave him defensive or leave him offensive. He's a steel wall of pain, agony, and awesomeness. You know, so he's really great on the defense or offense. Uh, a lot of the movements are similar. So you have the rangers who move like bishops, warriors who move like pawns, the knight moves like a knight. Um, the sorcerer and cleric, their spells have the range of a rook. So that's uh, what makes okay. them powerful. They can shoot all the way across the board with their magic, and they're doing intense amounts of damage. You that's know? pretty so cool. Their movement, though, is one square. Their powers are give them the strength of a rook. You know, the king okay. and queen, though, are both one square. You know, some people talk about, oh, why is the queen weaker? She's not. She's actually of equivalent strength to the queen, to the king. Right. Um, it is the pieces that allow her to, or that she allows to live that make her powerful. Ah, um, in okay. In order to beat the game, you have to kill the king and the queen. If you kill the king, all the characters who started the game on his side of the board go into exile. So you kill the king, you lose five of the characters automatically. Ah. You know, but so throughout the game, your main strategy is, okay, if I can get to that king, I can take out all his characters. But oftentimes, 
You have to fight through all of his side of the board before you can even get to him. Sure. So, you know, if you have a good strategy, you can re reach the royalty. But if your opponent has a good strategy, oh, you best believe it's going to be a fight. Right. You know, it's going to be everyone is fighting. Health is going down everywhere. You have to work on healing. Your royalty is surviving because you just can't get to the royalty. Right. You, know, you have a solid defense and a solid offense. So then the strategy comes in. You know, once it becomes intuitive, it is just strategy. It's all down to sure. we have the same forces. Is your strategy better than mine? Or is your direction of attack better than my direction of defense? You know, right. yes, dice are a factor, but if my paladin's next to your king, more often than not, I'm going to bash his face in. Sure. You know, so everyone is using, oh, it's a probability game. Yeah, but if I'm next to you, the probability yeah. of me whooping that booty <laughs> it's, is pretty high. It's probability you know, with strategy. Exactly, it's probability you know? with strategy. You That's know? so cool. So it's like you took the game of chess and you're like, you know it would be really awesome? If this was an actual bishop that could do magic. Yes. That's you know, so, so cool. Absolutely. You know, it was um, combining the elements of classic classes from fantasy, you know, the classic fantasy, you know, archetypes. Sure. Warrior. Uh, I have two warriors, two rangers, the crusader assassin. Sorcerer, cleric, the knight paladin, and the king and the queen. So Beautiful. it's the classic archetypes. That are, if someone is, uh, I love being a defensive player, then be them. You have the strength and um, of defensive characters, but you have the strengths of all the other characters. You are trying out all of the classes. You have all of their strengths, all of the weaknesses. And you can see why a party, you want to balance to your party. You want to have a knight as a tank and then back him up with a cleric healing him, then a crusader doing DPS, and then a ranger doing ranged combat to right. put pressure on the enemy. While the knight's just staying on the front line and people are like, I don't want to go near him. Right. <laughs> but then if they're not moving close to him, they're getting picked off by the assassin and the ranger sure. or the sorcerer firing lightning bolts across the battlefield. So you see the, you know, the benefits and weaknesses of all these characters in the game. That is so cool. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. You know, man. And unlike a lot of you know uh, the more popular art, um, role playing games, you know they they try to get so intricate and complex that it they, people end up getting lost in just making sure they're doing the rules right. Sure. You know, it's five, ten steps to attack someone. I don't want to roll to unsheath my weapon, hold my weapon properly, see my enemy properly, then attack my enemy properly. Hopefully I don't bat break, the, you know, break the weapon or disarm him or disarm myself or sure. some shenanigans like that. Then if you hit him, he has to do like two or three rolls to try and survive. And this is one attack. Right. You're, you know, you're spending two, three minutes on just one attack. And you're like, at the end of a two, three month adventure, you've kicked a tree and killed three goblins. Right. You know? yeah. and, and you're like, all right, guys, we're level two now. Exactly. We're moving up in the <laughs> world. And I'm just like... I've got four gold. You know, i got four gold and we've been to one town. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, this is not really what I want. You right. Know? So the um, cathedral, you know, it takes about 30 minutes or to an hour to play the game. Sure. Um, depending on how skilled you are, I've seen games that last 15 minutes. You know, a right. guy comes out and he's like, move, move, move. The knight is in the backfield. He rolls a crit. One shots the queen, and you're just like, well, damn. damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> you know, and it's just, you weren't ready. Right. Absolutely. It's not a, man, this is cheesy. No, 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 no. If he got to your queen, he had to get there. Yes, the, you, you know, let the him. The squares <laughs> next to your queen aren't available for him to move to. You had to have moved someone, not notice that he's coming over, and then not have a way to counter him coming yeah. over. Your defense was not ready. Yeah, he snuck in. Defense. Not you're bad. You just weren't ready for this defense sometimes. Um, so do the do the characters come with like preordained stats? Yes. Okay. Um, that is also very important. Yes. The character stats do not change. Good. Once you know them, you know them. Okay. Okay. Because D and D, you got to be like, uh, yeah, D &D. now intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah you know, D and D, you have twelve <laughs> something different stats, you know, and you're just like, and you don't pick. Yeah, you don't <laughs> you pick. Roll. A lot of them you have to roll for. You're just like, well, this isn't really the character I kind of wanted. I don't want a warrior who has intelligence, charisma, and wisdom, and like a two in strength. Exactly. You're like, well. No. Right. <laughs> like I just need to re-roll this or I'm not going to have a character I want. Sure. You know? Um, and so, you know, I always love the old tactic of, uh, in a lot of the role-playing games, when you have all the stats, it's, hey, you gain five points. Put them where you want them. Right. I've always loved that. So in Cathedral, I've, I do have a leveling up system. Okay, um, cool. But it occurs after you either win a game or implement one of the other two ways to do it, battle achievements or kill points. Okay. Um, kill points are more character based. If a character kills five characters, you can level up. Victory points or victory achievement, you win a game. If you win a game, you can level up one character for the next game. Battle okay. achievements, different objectives you can complete. Um, have characters in this territory by the end of the match. You gain an, one XP. If you get to five, you can level up a character. And okay. So implementing or implementing all three of them, you have different ways to level up your characters. Um, and 
when you level up, you can either level up a character to a level two, giving them a level two trait. Then if you, win enough, if you are able to level up a character again, you can level up the same character to a level three, giving them an ability added onto their trait, or level okay. up another character to a level two. Okay. At, the, at the end of a tournament, You'll have, if it's a six-round tournament, you might have six level two characters. I might have three level three characters. So it'll right. be quantity versus quality. That's not a bad thing. Sure. Yeah, it's how Either you play Either one it. could win, you know. Oh, how's it going? How you doing? Oh, my good sir, you need to see Avatar. <laughs> have you seen the Avatar, last the Airbender. last Airbender? Oh. You need to watch that first. Yes, sir. It's an amazing anime. Easily one of the best shows ever. Guy. Greatest shows ever. <laughs> Trust me, when you see the character, you're going to say, oh, yeah, I know yeah. that man. <laughs> like, <you're> like, <laughs> he's easily one of the best characters in the whole show, okay? Yeah, just cabbages. Amazing cabbages. <laughs> see, they're, they're not ready. Right? They're not ready. No. <laughs> soon. Soon, soon. <laughs> so, it's, so it's actually, with that game, it's very, very good to play multiple games because you can, yeah, like, yeah, carry yeah. over. Absolutely. You know, in tournaments, it's the best, way, it's the best reason to play tournaments with it. Uh, you play a six-round tournament. At the end of a tournament, even if you level up the same characters... I'm horribly sorry. I was distracted. No, you're uh, even if you play the same character, um, level up the same characters, you will have different abilities at the end of the tournament. You might have the knight, paladin, and king leveled up. Me too. But they'll have completely different abilities. Mine might be more um, offense based. Yours might be more defense based. And right. if that's the case, you'll play more defensively. I'll play more offensively, and sure. that's fine. That's just how you play. You know. Um, my God, I love cons. <laughs> right. But anywho. Um, <clears throat> how long is how long have you been working on this? I know your dad um, three since years. Yeah, forever. he was working on it for years. Um, but three years ago is yeah, when you're like, three years with him. We're you know, gonna do this. The Marines, you know. So um, he just didn't even have the opportunity to work on it. Then I found it, and I was able to, you know, really work on it. And I got it together, got everything together. I was happy. And now it's know, a game. And we were able to make it into a game, clean up all the loopholes, clean up any um, rule problems, and you're able to play the game, and have an awesome time playing it. You know? What what is required to play the game? Six twenty sided dice and any form of a chess set. You know, um, right now I do not have my own custom pieces because money. I've seen them. They're you know, amazing. But you know, I have my own Reaper miniatures that you know I've had my one of my greatest friends paint them. Uh, I have custom chess boards that he handcrafted and put terrain on. And stuff I've like seen that. them. They're amazing. Yeah, you know, so it's really awesome stuff like that. Um, and you can use whatever you want. You know, you okay. can make your own chess board, or you can go to a dollar store and get your own chess set. Put it like uh, I was telling someone else earlier. Uh, put a red dot on one of the knights. You got a paladin. Right. You know, so you use whatever. If you know what a piece represents, I know what a piece represents, it represents that piece. So you can play the whole game. Sure. You know? So it's very accessible, and that's my main goal. I want it to be accessible. And then eventually, miniatures. Yes, exactly, uh, miniatures. That's so exciting. You know, my ultimate goal, I want to get to be an app. And then, uh, um, you know, make it oh. kind of like that, uh, what's it called, Wars with Friends, where okay. it's you make a move, your move. And then, you know, it's your, take your time. You know, you do it whenever you want. Right. So you have multiple games going on with friends everywhere. You know, so it'd be... Uh, That'd be cool. Imagine yeah, playing that know. for like a year. You've yeah, got like dude. tons of leveled yeah, up characters. Yeah, you know, a really awesome thing. You level up characters like that. So that'd be really awesome. Um, you know, those are along the, like, the, the final goals of the project. So um, that's, that's awesome. I really want to be with the game. So. Awesome. Yeah, well, man, thank you. I'm going to let you go. Oh, thank you. Wow, well, we're actually over an hour. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. Well, well, well good, sir. Dude, thank you for coming on. Dude, thank you for being here, man. I feel you know. I saw, I heard you were here, and I was like, oh, I got to go. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, dude. Dude, thank really, you so much. I appreciate it. Dude, that is I appreciate so it. It's awesome. always awesome talking to Where you. Where can people find this stuff? Um, and where can they find you? Right now, um, Cathedral can be found uh, on Facebook, on Amazon. Uh, we're going to be putting it into Barnes & Nobles with the second edition coming out. Nice. Um, you can find it on the Visual Adjectives website, uh, along with you know the Carpe Nocturne magazine. Um, we're going to get our website created. Right now, it's a basic you know, homepage that you can go. You know, it'll link to buying the book. Um, but we got to find a web designer to finish up that homepage. Sure. Uh, or the entire web website, which would be awesome. Oh, God, I can't wait. Right. You know, we'll be able to put up artwork, you know, updates, stuff like that. Um, we're going to be starting a YouTube channel. So we can start having gameplay nice. videos, stuff like that, get people into it. Um, so, you know, we're really moving forward with it this year. Or next awesome. year, sorry. Let's start next year going in. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so Facebook's um, I have, the best uh, way. three expansions planned for next year. Um, Beautiful. And they're going to be great. It's going to be uh, the story um, edition of the book. You know, it goes over like a 100-page story of the book. Um, territories edition, which affects the board itself. And then eventually campaign edition, which adds a story play element to the game. Nice. So we're going to be working on those three expansions for the next year, my good sir. And it's Cathedral on Facebook. Cathedral Fantasy Role Playing Chess. How do you spell Cathedral? Because it's C -A -T -H -E -D -R different. C-A-T-H-E-D-R apostrophe L. 
I like it. Thank you, man. Thank you. That it's is a amazing. It's a small, unique thing, but it's what makes it memorable. Exactly. And know? different. Makes it yours. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. So, it, it, sir. Dude, it thank a, you again. Always a pleasure talking. We got a LARP and Dude, fight with foam swords yes. and stuff. You know, bro. You already know. And uh, I'm very excited. Keep me posted. Dude, I will. And I, I will. will plug the hell out of it. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much, man. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And I always say and and then push the button. Oh, it's okay. But I don't want to do it. Do you want to push and the button? And